CA, what did you do? It's overwhelmingly negative. Uh, welcome back. This is CBH4K, and this is Total War Warhammer 3 discussion, where I basically just look at the fallout of the statement CA made and of the pricing issue, well, not the issue, but the, the price of Shadows of Change. And now, Shadows of Change isn't, it's probably the most expensive right next to the Chaos Dwarves in price. Now, a lot of people were willing to ignore Chaos Dwarves because they introduced a new lore of magic. They introduced new uh, a new race to play, but <laughs> oh my, it's getting mostly negative now, yeah. Now, I shouldn't say that, but uh, people were willing to forgive it, I'll just say that. But Shadows of Change they're not introducing any new races. They're just introducing factions with the, basically a faction within the race. So you're not really just, you're just getting a palette swap a bit on some of the things, and, and you may get a few new um, campaign mechanics, but you're not getting anything really like new new. You're getting you're getting basically uh, some new abilities, but nothing like out there like you would have gotten with the. Chaos Dwarves, you're getting something like um, maybe a new uh, spell or new abilities, but here's what you're getting. You're getting three Legendary Lords, and we already have a bunch of Legendary Lords in um, the game already. So, the question is, what kind of, what do they add? And they add a few things, but they're not like game changers like a new race would be. Perform Destiny schemes, establish, execute grand scheme stratagems, conjure powerful hexes, scatter magical spells, random. Mm hmm. Just look. Let's just say it's not. It's not warranty enough for the price tag. And. And it's not just the price that um, has people in a bother. It's the service. Now, some of you are wondering, what do you mean by service? Well, I mean... Nakai is one of the... Uh, let me take you to the hunter and the beast. Yeah. Nakai, he was one of the legendary lords released with hunter and the beast by the way hunter and the beast only cost 10 bucks so <laughs> hunter and the beast they he was the beast in hunter and the beast and he uh he was a he was a he was i wouldn't say a bad campaign it's just that he has a problem in that he's a horde faction but he doesn't get that much money to be a horde faction so he's constantly not making any money and he's sort of like at the edge of bankruptcy constantly in his campaign. And he just has like one or two armies. And that's on medium difficulty. That was his problem. But it has been made worse by the fact that he cannot recruit Croxagores. And Croxagores are his specialty unit. And if he can't recruit Croxagores, then it sort of like mutes him. Or should I say, you know what? That's not entirely true. I looked up his um, campaign mechanics, and he can do Blessed Croxagores. Now, Blessed Croxagores is like maybe you can do one or three units. Like, it's a special thing you have to do to get Croxagores, but you can't just build a building within your horde and get a Croxagore unit going, which I think is kind of unfortunate. Um... <laughs> Well, I think. Now, none of this is the main. That's not the only reason. That's not the only issue. That's not the only problem with Total War Warhammer 3. It's based off of the patches. Like, the Crossico issue was. only became an issue because they released a patch like a few months ago that. Um, was it a few months ago or a few weeks ago that just crashed the entire. I won't say crashed it, but caused the problem. So instead of going in there and fixing it, and there's been a few modders who've 
show like a 12 minute video like yeah you can just fix it like this and you can have it done on a mass scale and CA has not been able to do that for whatever reason we don't know what the reason is so it's not just that people are mad about the price it's that they're mad about the service the lack of service I'm just making this video as a idea just giving you guys an idea of why everyone's mad right now and also I'm probably not gonna do any more trailer breakdowns for a while on Total War Warhammer 3 I'll probably do other trailer breakdowns on other stuff but not for Total War Warhammer 3 it's not gonna happen anytime soon and this comes from someone who's played a lot of medieval has played a lot of um, various other Total War games and I do love Total War I even like Nakai. I even like the Nakai playthrough I did on launch. Uh, it was hilariously messy and all over the place, but I enjoyed it. Um, so I was fighting Marcus Wolf. I was playing as Nakai, and I decided to fight Marcus Wolfhart early because why not? And he beat me, and he defeated me, and I was like stuck down in the so southern part of Lustria. Now, Lustria is the continent you fight on, and I w in, in Lustria, there's like a ton of other legendary lords. There's a ton of other uh, regular lords just fighting for space there, so you're going to have to be fighting constantly. And I was trapped in the southern area because I couldn't get back to my area uh, in the north, which I had built up a few friendly settlements there, so I could have like, safe territory. So I was under constant attack and I had to basically fight my way back up to the north I conquered the south for the most part then I started conquering the north and I beat Marcus Wolfhard it was probably one of the best uh, one of the most fun campaigns I've ever played in Total War one of them not the funnest but anyway back to the current issue which is Total War Warhammer 3 not being, I would say, being poorly optim. It's poorly optimized in some areas. It's poorly patched. They really need to work on it. They really need to do some patches for it. They really need to make it worthwhile for this incredible price tag they've put on the um, game. Let's compare it to something like Cyberpunk. Let's, let's, Phantom Liberty. Phantom Liberty. Guys, Phantom Liberty is basically CD Projekt Red's apology for the Cyberpunk 2027's poor launch. It's not... They're not saying, like, look, we're really sorry, we messed up. It's not just that. It's them rebuilding... They're good the good graces uh, rebuilding the bridge that they burned um, when they launched cyberpunk in the state was launched at. now do you think it's worth thirty dollars you think this game this um, DLC is worth thirty dollars honestly a lot of people I haven't heard that many complaints about the thirty dollars and the reason they haven't heard that many complaints is because they got Ildris Elba they got Keanu Reeves to come back they got new um, areas in the game they have got like a new faction they have a whole new faction and they have various other things new styles new gadgets new like like they basically redid the entire game it's basically cyberpunk 1.5 like they rebuilt the game it's not it's not cyberpunk 2 it's cyberpunk 1.5 it's they're not a full sequel but sort of like a partial sequel it's it's a pretty good expansion. Whereas this doesn't feel like it's a... It's like a new game, really. It just sort of like feels like... Oh, they added a couple of new things here and there. And like, yeah, it's pretty fun. But that's not... It's not worth it to a lot of people. And people have been... I, I wouldn't say up in arms, but they've just been... Very, very vocal about their dislike of it. And they're voting with their wallets. And they're not pre-ordering. And they're not doing that. And honestly, I can't blame them for being upset. They have... Oh, look, it's down to mostly negative. 
<laughs> oh, CA. And it's a mix. Oh, CA. And oh, to tell you the worst part, CA had a response to this. They responded on Twitter. They normally don't say nothing when things like this happen. They just sort of quietly wait for it to go away. And for their for the most part, it works. Yeah, they just quietly sit there and let it go away. But this time they made a statement on Twitter, I believe it was. And they said, well, to summarize, it basically was either buy the DLC or we'll kill any and all future support for Total War Warhammer 3. And the entire fandom's response it was, go ahead. Wow. So, either they're calling your bluff for two, one or two reasons. One, they know you're, they know you're bluffing because this is a cash cow for you and you're not going to like throw it down in the toilet. So, that's one one. The other one is they don't care if you do it. They genuinely don't care. Which is going to be far worse because you have like little to no leverage, if that's true. And also, you guys haven't been really releasing the patches or bug fixes. You guys need to get double, you know, I don't say get on that like right now, but you should be working on them. Like it's been months since we've had a bug fix or something like that. How long has it been? How long has it been since we had a bug fix? Let's look through the thing here. Developer updates. These aren't patches. You're trying to sell us new stuff, man, but you ain't giving us... Okay. Yeah, you've been talking about stuff. I, I guess that's good. We're talking about sales. All right, here's here's a patch in June. Hmm. Okay. Okay, CA. I see how it is. Well, uh, that does that about does it. Uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one, I guess.